Whoa, yeah. It's new. It's blue. It's uh, <laughs> Blue Yeti. Yes. We're going to take a look at emergency power, but also portable power stations for RV camping and just a lot of other applications that some people are starting to get into, like running the 3D printers. So let's do this. Yeah, Blue Yeti sent these in to us to have a look at and do a review on, and I'm pretty excited because this is one of these brand names you kind of look at it, you see it on the internet all the time with advertisements and think, you know, I'd like to take a look at their stuff. Well, they were nice enough to send both of them in, which is like, good, you know. And I was like, I really want to look at the power station, but this adds an interesting feature, the expansion battery. So, uh, rather than do the open box thing or what's in the box, I thought, I'll just take them out of the box, you know, ah, you know. So after you unpack the boxes, you've got uh, the power station, of course, and a box with all the cables you'll need for charging this up. And there's three different ways to charge it up. Solar, you can also charge it off the cigarette lighter, you know, plug for the car thing or whatever. And also, of course, home electrical. You just plug it into an outlet and bring this thing up to full charge. So it makes good standby power as well. And we'll get back into that in a minute here. Uh, now, on the battery situation, we get again, and they both come with manuals. Did I mention that? You know, yeah, they both come with manuals. And uh, the extended battery, obviously you're going to buy this first. This is something that's more of an optional feature, but it, it will add a lot of capacity. And uh, again, and this will come with just the one cable, which plugs from the storage into the power station. So that's kind of a nice, easy, simple, you know, not too much to concern yourself with there. But the, uh, the big thing is we're going to focus on the power station first and we'll come back to the expansion battery which is really adds quite a bit of uh, storage which is surprising because uh, the price and everything on these is, is actually really good. By the way, I will have a link in the description below to where you can get you know the deals on these things right now. The camping side of it is also really good on these particular power stations. The first thing that you should notice is the weight. These really nice handles, but they're 20 pounds, so they're not. They're, you know, these are not heavy like some of the uh, <clears throat> other ones that we've run run into. Yeah, so they're nice and light. They're about 20 pounds, around 20, 21 pounds each. So they don't get heavy, stupid. So you can have, you know, if you're an older person like myself, you can haul, you know, over 30 years of age, right? You know, you can haul these things around with the RV, the camp, or whatever. They don't take up a lot of space, and they offer you the ability to have up to 600 watts of power, AC, wherever you want it, you know. And also, if you feel that you need that 600 watts, but you need it for an extended amount of time, or you need, you'd like to have more power, just period you can get the expansion battery. Yeah, so the first thing I noticed on this particular power station was all the rubber caps on everything because they are saying that this is uh, weather resistant. I mean, you're not gonna be able to throw this in the water and pull it back out or something. That would be a bad idea. But if it got caught in a little bit of rain or you know got some water thrown up on it by mistake or something even, uh, chances are if you've got all your caps in place, the unit's going to survive it, which is really good because a lot of them have come in over this past year. They didn't have rubber seal caps like that over everything, especially the, like the USBs and stuff. So this thing is fairly watertight, which is like way better than, you know, some of the other ones. Now, if we look at the back of the box here, this is a good place to look, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, application. Uh, and they talk about camping and, you know, that's good. But they also talk about emergency uh, power, of course, anytime you need it. Uh, because we, God knows, we're having blackouts these days, again. And uh, they also talk about uh, running a small barbecue uh, or party or something where, you, you know, if you're having a good party and you want to put something extra out there for lighting and whatever, you know, these power stations will supply what you need. Especially like the Christmas lighting right now is, is really cool with these things. But uh, uh, any kind of dry camping, uh, also uh, residential, you know, for home stuff, RV, camping, that kind of thing. Again, you know, having some of these are handy. There's, uh, here's the basically what comes with the box too. They, they sort of explain it over here and then they show some different loads, you know, uh, like six hours on a, on a laptop that's uh, sucking 70 watts. That must be an HP, you know, <laughs> yeah. and uh, two, 26 hours on a, uh, looks like a 10 watt light bulb or something. If you want to just release some lights running that are LED, you know, 10 watts LED, that's quite a bit of power actually. Uh, fan, ventilation fan, uh, projector for whatever, outside, maybe put it up on the garage and have a movie playing for the neighbors or something, you know. 
weird stuff, you know. <laughs> and uh, space heater, uh, don't know, this is a 350 watt space heater. I have, uh, mine in here is probably 1500 watts, so yeah, that's not gonna work out too good, but there is such a thing. So you can get them for camping and stuff, little space heaters, which is cool. Uh, also, they've got the uh, car refrigerator, like the little cooler type cases where you plug it into something, and again, you can run that for hours on end off of one of these. Actually, they're saying 6.6 .6 hours is what they're thinking the rating is, but again, this is depending on what cooler you buy, you know, yeah. And the television, again, 6.6 .6 hours if it's a 60 watt light, uh, TV set, which is, you know, pretty typical of a small TV. And then you've got your uh, phone, which uh, at 15 watts, you could leave it sitting here on here for about 21 hours, which and these are, you know, numbers that are kind of important, but there's one thing here that uh, I noticed another person that did a review and I was not happy with what they had to say because all of this doesn't take into one account and that is this will plug into some portable solar panels. So you can bring solar power in during the daytime and you could be using this and keeping this fully stored or storing it, you know, fully charging it. And I thought that was kind of, it's a shame that the, the guy sort of short-sighted it, that he was like living off of this thing or something by itself. No, you know, if you, if you put solar on this thing, you can charge it all the way up. And the next day you can charge it all the way up again and use it in the evenings or something for lighting or, you know, part of your camping situation. So I really uh, think that these are really a cool item. But the other thing I've been seeing these show up around is 3D printing where they do like a standby system. So if the power does go out even for a short amount of time, the 3D printer doesn't skip or lose because uh, 3D printing is one of those things where you don't want the machine to stop in mid production and then just sit there and cool down for half an hour or an hour. And then when it comes back on, you try to recover. And in, in most cases, your the modeling on the 3D printing is ruined. And sometimes some of those models of mine that I do are sometimes worth, you know, $30, $40 or something. You don't want that going up in smoke because we had a power blink or something like that. So having standby power like this avoids that problem from even happening. And a lot of printer farms are using these nowadays to support their 3D printers so that they don't lose that, that situation. Uh, another place I saw these being used is uh, portables, which I don't see on here is a lot of photographers and even videographers that want to go out in the field and you know videotape stuff and record a lot of times they'll take they'll want to take something like this with them the problem is some of them are so heavy and so awkward this one is only like I said with the handles it's only 20 pounds so that you know doesn't add as much to your you know your equipment as some others so you can have you know lighting and all kinds of cool stuff for your for video work while you're out in the middle of the forest someplace shooting video and you can have a you know standby power like this. So there's a lot of interesting things. Let's get to the hard numbers. Yeah. So let's talk about the hard numbers here. Uh, it's pure sine wave at 600 watts. So it will run some you know some pretty quite a bit of things. There's a lot of stuff you can be plugged in and you know running. Uh, but it has a storage just by itself. It has a 504 watt hour rating. So it wouldn't quite last you an hour if you were drawing a whole 600 watts, which, you know, yeah, you know, that's quite a bit of power to be drawing for any length of time anyways. But uh, I'm gonna show you something that does draw power, but you don't use it for a long period of time. So we'll plug something in for a bit. But with the expansion uh, set on here, look at the rating now, 2116, 2116 watt hours. That is gonna last you quite a few hours, yeah. and. What it doesn't tell you, and nobody can tell you here until we actually test it, I guess, is if we plug a solar panel into it and bring power into the machine as well, that will again extend that hour. But it'll depend on how much solar power we're allowed to bring in per se. So that's the next, really that's the next key number we need to take a look at on this unit. Besides all the output we have here with the two, two outlet plugs that are right here, USB-A, USB-C, and the, the standard plug here, nice rubberized switches to turn the power on and off. We also have the emergency light on the back side, which will do the, uh, a nice ambient lamp, you know, for like camping again or what, or emergency lighting, but it also has the SOS, you know, the flashing lighty thing or the emergency flashy lighty thing. So it has that on the back here. That's not something that I, I kind of wish the manufacturer would leave that out, but I understand if for camping and stuff, yeah, this, this might be a lifesaver right there. Now on this side, and this is where things are gonna get, 
interesting is right here is the plug for the solar coming in and it's rated from 12 to 28 volt and believe me more voltage is better when you're when you're trying to charge from solar panels but it has an 8 amp rating so that means at 12 volts you would use like a 100 watt panel and that's about all you can do with it but if you have say like a 24 volt panel system again we're talking portables uh, at, at, at 24 volt you could plug it in you will charge almost twice as fast and you'll have almost 200 watts of power coming in and this is where things got a little interesting here this is something again did not see didn't see this coming because I wanted I didn't want to you know get off of this but the expansion battery has a DC charge system for solar power with the same rating so in other words you can be charging this uh, on some maybe portable solar panels back at the campsite while you take this into the bush with you to have that power you need for lighting or whatever if you're doing like photography work just you know just thinking outside the box I guess you could say lithium ion battery storage so as I was saying uh, the having these two and being able to separate and back and forth and connect the two together and stuff it could add uh, an extra game changer to your plans for anything from you know camping on to whatever and having uh, say if you have solar power station or something like I have where it's remote uh, from the house you could take this over there and charge it up or take them both over take just one or the other and you know it can trade off power so that's a cool thing now uh, was one other thing I was going to do uh, just because I wanted to show you something but first I need to charge both of these up so we're going to run them outside uh, with a portable solar panel as soon as I figure out which one I'm going to use because I have a selection of portable solar <laughs> panels and we'll hook up and we'll get these two charged up to 100% uh, again that's recommended uh, when they first come in you should charge them fully up before you start using them well, that's all about lithium ions so let's get these outside and get charging yes so what I've done here is uh, we're out in the barn actually I, I should have called it outside but uh, yeah out, out in the barn and I've got a solar package system tied up right here coming in it's at uh, 12 volt and here's the situation I've got a 300 watt load on here so that's you know taking a lot of energy out of this thing technically you know that should last well less than two hours but because I've got 114 watts coming in off a solar package I've got 2.6 hours uh, of time on this thing obviously if I shut the AC off and I don't know how the camera will react to that but let's try that now there's no load and okay so what I'm looking at here is very very different it shows point one. In other words, in uh, one tenth of an hour, this system will be fully charged. So you got to kind of be aware of what you're what you're reading. But beautiful. Out. Uh, that's another thing I got to say about the Blue Eddy. Look at this input output. Very nice display. Pretty display and easy to read. And I, again, that's just something I have to compliment them on that because that that screen is when you look at the information, you can just see it right there. It's really great. Let's put the AC back on again for a second and. Uh, here, boom, yeah, there's my there's my bright light. That's actually a 300 watt LED light strip that's in my barn here to help light the area up so I can see well enough. And of course the hours are now dropping down a little bit because we're actually showing a load as opposed to charging. And uh, also there's a DC switch here, which will turn these DC systems on if you're charging the, you know, the laptops, the cell phones or whatever. And we'll just shut that back off. And uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was this is right now is really low it's late in the day there's only a couple hundred watts of panels on this system right now so getting 114 watts we could go up to 200 on this side and that's a key factor because having 200 coming in will charge the system up pretty quickly now what I'm gonna when we come back I'm gonna have the battery cabled in with this machine and we'll have everything tied together and we'll see what the difference is let's just shut that off and we're back now I've cabled the extension battery into storage into the system uh, I wanted to point out too that this by itself has two uh, outputs you've got a USB-C and a USB-A plus you have again the cigarette lighter plug so you could actually charge this up and theoretically use it you know the way it is it's not as fancy of course as our pretty boy down below here but <laughs> now they're cabled together so what's happened now is well it's now going to take 3.1 hours to fully charge because we're charging this and we're also charging this at the same time and 
uh, the other thing I guess we'll have to try to show this to you on camera, I don't know, but this is 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100% charging. So you have this nice little LED type indicator lights that are flashing to show when it's charging. Uh, if you want to turn these on, it's a DC switch. So the, the, the storage or the expansion battery is very simplistic. It's, it's easy enough to use. The uh, cabling is long enough to do just about anything you want with it, really. It's, it's a little bit more cable than I actually thought they would give you with this kit, which is, which is nice. Now, I'm going to plug the 300 watt light back in. But because we're cabled to two of these, we'll see what kind of time we have now. Now I've turned the uh, AC light, whoop, turn the AC on. There we go, AC on, and boom, there's the 300 watt load, and we're now down to 3.2. Okay, we're still jobbering around here a little bit. 5.5, 5.2, it's trying to do the math and figure out how long these two systems will last together pulling that 300 watts. We're at 4.8 hours right now, almost five hours at 300 watts. That's a pretty darn good awesome system. I think for most people, if you're using that kind of power, and this is a very strong LED light, it's a, obviously it's, it's a commercial uh, system. So it's pulling a lot of power, and, you know, for an LED, that's a lot of, yeah, that's a lot of power. It's very bright, I really like it. <laughs> yeah. If you're gonna have light, you may as well have lots of it, you know. and. Now 4.8 hours, so it's really good. The unit, this unit by itself, you can see it was like not even two hours, and it would be, uh, you know, out of the picture. But I also have the uh, solar power plugged in, and in fact, we can plug the solar power just right into here and directly charge just this system, or we can charge both right now. So let's turn that back off, and again, see how we're doing. And right now, to bring both units to full charge should be around three hours, I think it was at this point, but uh, it's coming back up and reading back to around three, 3.2 hours. Theoretically, uh, if we had sunshine for the next 3.2 hours, and just look at my watch here, which we just about do. I've just about got three hours of say, uh, daylight left. So we would still be able to do something with this. And this is only a couple of hundred watts uh, at a low angle sun right now at 111 watts. So we're not doing too shabby. I can do better than this with a portable right now because the portables, I can put them up on an angle. But the problem was I tried it outside today and the sun was so bright on all of this that you, on the camera, you guys wouldn't have been able to see it well. So I thought, well, we'll go over to the barn where it's darker and this way we can sort of film and you can get to see, you know, see the two units in action doing their thing. Now, let's go get that, that uh, heavy load I was talking about. Okay, this is uh, just a Ryobi power tool. I just plugged it in here to the... Just, you know, wanted to give you the idea that, you know, you can, you can run a tool temporarily, at least for a short amount of time. That's actually pretty low wattage considering, you know, it's a 3 8 drill from Ryobi. But you could run power tools, you know, stuff like this. Wouldn't be a, wouldn't be a problem. I'm going to shut the AC off, and the reason for that is it'll help to allow the solar to charge the system up. And using the AC on, of course, the inverter would be running, so you'd be paying a little bit more power. So as soon as I turn that off, the, uh, the time is, it has dropped down a little tiny bit. Okay, I thought I would try outside anyways, and right now I'm on a portable 200 watt solar panel and the portable panel is putting out 155 watts. Now, of course, I've got the panel up on an angle towards the sun, and now we're down to only two hours to fully charge both of these units, which is, you know, I think that's pretty reasonable because with uh, RV camping and stuff, obviously you're not gonna be dragging, you know, thousands of watts around in solar panels with you. <sighs> well, I had to cut away from uh, outside. It was too windy and all of a sudden it just sort of blew up on me, so I brought everything back in here so we can finish this up. But uh, the only other question I could think of was warranty, uh, and Blue Eddy, depending on the product, runs 24 months to 72 months, and they also have extension policies and things you can buy into, so there's a lot of warranty that you can get on these things. And in fact, at the back of the uh, manual, there's a warranty card thing you can fill out to get your you know coverage for these things. And I think if you look after them, they'll probably look after you, right? And that, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, this has been fantastic. And uh, also showed this to a camper today, an RV camper. In fact, he's heading for uh, Quartzsite, Arizona, I believe. And he was looking over this. This 
He loved this. He absolutely loved it. And I showed him the, the specs, the numbers and everything. He says, wow. He says, that would be absolutely awesome, you know, for for his evening parties. Yeah, eh, that's the way our viewers are, live, aren't they? You know, that's the way they roll. <laughs> I'm going to get out of here now, and I'm going to call this off. And please like, uh, share, and subscribe, and ring the notice bell. And thank you so much for watching Coffee and Tools, and God bless everybody. And <sighs> Merry Christmas, if I don't see you between now and then. And <laughs> over and out.